So I have about a kilogram of chocolate here that's been cooled down to about 33.5 degrees. I'm going to just do a little test on the temper before I add my easy temper silk. You can see how nice and thin that is because of the temperature that it's at. So, we are going to pull out our silk. Now let's have a look. Do you see the texture of that? It's wonderfully silky. Give it a little stir. Sometimes you get a little bit of almost melted cocoa butter on the top, and that's fine. You just stir that in. Now, as I say, I had about a kilo here, so I want about 10 grams of silk in order to pre-crystallize it. So, I'm getting good at this. Exactly 10, 10 grams. Now I'm going to put my remaining silk back into the easy temper. Close the lid. Let's get my scale out of the way. And I'm just going to stir it in. And you can see how easily it combines. One thing I have noticed, when I check the temperature after about a minute, it seems to have usually dropped about one degree Celsius, and I think that's because it's giving off the latent heat. So there I am, I'm at about 32.4 degrees after I've added my silk. Now at this point, I could heat this back up to 33 and a half, which is about 92.3 degrees Fahrenheit. The other thing I'd like to do is a little test on this once it's been stirred in, and then we can compare that to our other later. So you can see that compared to our initial test, it is actually a little more a little more viscous because it's got those beta crystals in there. A closer look here at our temper. So on my left I have the one that was dipped before I added the silk. You can see it looks shinier. It actually looks wet. When I run my finger along it, it's melted. So it has not ever completely firmed up. That was in the fridge for a minute or two, initially. So, from about a minute and a half later, after adding the Easy Temper Silk, you can see that I can rub my finger along it without actually making any sort of a mark on it. It's not melted. It's in beautiful temperature. I'm just going to get my excess off. I'm going to give it a little tap. Just to get the bubbles out of there. And I'm going to get my excess chocolate out of here. how clearly you can see that, but we're seeing the bottom of the mold quite readily through that, which indicates we've got a nice thin shell. I'm just going to give it another little scrape to get the excess so off. Remaining in temper, you can see that kind of oil slick on the surface under the fluorescent lights. You 
can see how nice and thin this is to work with because of the high temperature. I'm just going to give that a little tap. Get the majority of the bubbles out of there. A quick scrape. Normally unmold my chocolates right away. Um, I find I get a better shine if I leave them overnight, but I'm trying to illustrate a point here tonight. So this is probably about a half an hour from when we started. And you can see they're falling out of the mold quite readily. They have a nice shiny surface on them because the chocolate is in good temper. And now what I would like to do, you can see a little bit of the dark filling through. So I'd like to take one of these and cut it. That would be if I could find a knife. Sure, I have about a dozen of them here. That's what I'm after. Okay. So, let's just cut this guy in half. And you can see that we've got a fairly thin coating there. Mmm, that's sweet. Good. 